And join us now to talk about the technical and societal impacts of the latest generation of AI chips. Stephen Levy, the editor at uh, at large at Wired. Stephen, um, did you read? Do you ascribe anything to, to the science fiction that we've all read over the years about uh, as we get closer and closer to this moment uh, of a sentient uh, computer? I, I, is it relevant to talk about those issues or is it too pie in the sky? Are we getting close? You know, in, in his two hour keynote, um, you know, the NVIDIA CEO, uh, Jensen Wong, really didn't touch on sentience. So uh, I think we're a little away from that. You know, he, he didn't shy away from big ideas. Uh, I think it really is up for grabs where we're going to land with AI. Right now, the AI we have, the generative AI, is startling beyond what most even scientists thought was going to happen in five years ago. They, they wouldn't have predicted that we're going to be this far along. But sentience is really a step beyond uh, what anyone can get their arms around now. So I, I, I wouldn't expect uh, computers coming to life anytime soon. That's why it's called a singularity, I guess, because we have no idea what's on the other side of it. But yeah, well, uh, uh, Satya Nadella uh, mentioned it as the last invention, if you know, if, if that happens. Uh, and uh, OpenAI has it in their contracts that if artificial general intelligence is reached, they have to renegotiate anything because who knows what anything means anymore if that happens. That's what I was talking about. Yeah, I, I don't. Maybe artificial general intelligence is not the same as sentience, and I think uh, Jensen Huang sort of differentiated the two. He sees that, the emergence of AGI within five years. I mean, if you give it another, I mean, Steve, if you give it another 20 years after the next five, I, I think you're at sentience. And, and then I, I do think we need to start, the, the, the human brain, do we know the difference between a sociopath and and a normal person at this point? Do we I know, know the when I see it? You know, <laughs> it's like <laughs> pornography. Uh, we're, we're, we're getting into squishy grounds here, but I mean, we don't know inside anyone's brain. So if we, if the computers get smart enough in terms of their performance, it becomes moot whether they're actually sending it or not if they're behaving that way. So. Uh, Sentience really is in. I don't want them to pull my plug, Stephen, and, and get rid of all, you know, hydrocarbon based or carbohydrate based beings because we're superfluous and they don't need us. I, I mean, I really do want. That's why I started this whole interview about science fiction and what's possible, because there are plenty of things to worry about with AI. But, you know, they're not existential things. And I think that, that it is actually something that 100 years from now could be existential if we don't know what we're doing. It's up to us to determine to what degree of control humans will have in the systems that operate modern society. Uh, it turns out to be very convenient uh, as computers get smarter and smarter to turn over those things to computers because our systems are so complex that no humans can easily grasp them. And I think that's when the danger comes. It's not necessarily a sentient computer making a decision to take things over, but a computer fulfilling missions that we might give it might determine that fulfilling that mission uh, might not be the best thing for humans in the way it does it. Well, we can do that already. I mean, you, know, you just got to look at the, go watch the movie Oppenheimer. We can create systems that if a human employs it, that it, it, it just is devastating. Um, so near term, Stephen, I, I'm not going to, okay, I'm not going to worry then. Uh, near term. What, <laughs> not what, what, what Not today, but what, what should I uh, worry about near term? Well, I think the NVIDIA case is, is something that I think a lot of people are quietly concerned about in the industry is that this one company, um, you know, in large part because it, it's done so well in building these chips at just the right time, uh, has so much power to determine winners and losers and, you know, uh, build itself up. It's gone from, uh, you know, sort of the second tier in the tech industry to way up top, you know, in, in the clouds with the, the, the top tier, uh, you know, multi-trillion dollars. So I think that right now, uh, the question is whether we're viewing peak NVIDIA, uh, because right now they look at the, the apex of their power, they're ex expanding their lead, or whether uh, people are going to be determined to catch up to replace it with, um, you know, or present a competitor uh, that can do the same with similar chips. Right now, there's no competitor that could even match them. 
uh, on International Happiness Day, can you tell me when we're, we're going to have AI designing rational drugs and curing cancer and, and consolidating all of our medical records so that we know exactly what uh, the prognosis is and what kind of treatment we need? I mean, there are amazing things that are, that are potentially right. near term with this, right? Can you give me some of those? Absolutely. I think that's going to happen soon. I mean, just a few years ago, even before generative AI exploded, uh, Google DeepMind uh, came up with a way to solve the problem of protein folding, which was something that, you know, was a, a very difficult, intractable challenge that uh, scientists couldn't do easily. Uh, and I think we're going to see the same kind of advances with uh, now generative AI and chips like NVIDIA's. Uh, there's already a giant partnership with Norvo uh, Nova Nordisk uh, to try to solve those problems and come up with new drugs.